Okay, so let's talk about the, the brief example, and we're going to give the business case of the things that you need to do with your autoresponder account, and AWeber in particular, in order to make sure that you're doing everything you can to generate leads. And these are the things that you really must be doing just about every time that you either launch a product or even if you decide you want to start looking to get people to opt in so that you can sell to them. These are the things that you and I must be doing pretty much all the time. And I call this the disciplined business case because the things that I'm going to tell you to do, these are, these are a discipline. They will seem as if they do not add up to much. They will seem as if they are overkill. But if you do not do them, then what happens is you, you don't necessarily get the, uh, I, I'd say, the momentum to do some of the other things. So let's talk about what they are. Okay, so the, so the first thing, obviously, um, you're going to need to do is you're going to need to set up your first list to collect names and email address, addresses of prospects. And it doesn't matter where you're setting this up, where that opt-in page is going to be. You want to set up that first list to collect names and email address of prospects only. Now, when you talk to these people, when you're sending emails to these people, you are going to speak to them as if they have not become your customer yet. So you want to keep them on a separate list. Does everybody understand that? So if you get what I mean by that, please put the number one in the question box. You need to, you need to market to these folks as if they have not become your customer. And, and quite honestly, it doesn't matter if they have bought other products like yours. If they haven't bought them from you, they're not your customer yet. You can't assume that they are. So you need to speak to them as if they are new to you, not necessarily new to the industry. Does that make sense? So, so, so the difference, again, I'm not saying that they got to be new to Internet marketing. I'm not saying they have to be new to the niche. I'm saying they need to be new to you in the niche. And so you want to collect them into a list. However you set it up, you're going to set up that first list for those people. Now, one of the things that you and I need to do on every sales and opt-in page that we do, and some of you are going to feel a little sheepish about this, you need to set up an exit pop from that, that sales page or opt-in page. And again, I, I understand how that feels. I understand that might feel a little weird and you might feel a little bit too salesy. I promise you you're leaving leads on the table and I promise you you're leaving people on the table that will eventually come to like you, that will eventually become to like you and trust you. So whatever your sales page is, whatever page builder you're, you're using, you have to exit pop people who leave that page into another list. So that means then you're going to have to make sure you've got an offer that's awesome so that people can't say no to it. It needs to be something that's so awesome that people would be willing to pay for it. And those of you who buy PLR, you've got some of those offers. So put something on a page that people can get so when they click away from your page the first time, they're still going to become your prospect because you're going to promise them something that they're going to get that's absolutely awesome. Now, does everybody understand that? So if you get that, if you understand that concept, please put the number two in the question box. Now, if, how, how, many of you, how many of you feel a little funny about that? So if you, how many, if, if you feel a little funny about an exit pop, I want you to put the number three in the question box. Because I know there, there, there. I, I know that that makes you feel a little funny, and you don't want to do it because it feels like a little bit over the top. Yes, I understand that, but guess what? Um, you cannot. You, 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 you will, you will leave some of the people that will eventually become your, I'd say, your most ardent supporters um, behind. And 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 if you really got something great to offer. It's your duty to try to collect those people and put them in your autoresponder, right? Okay, now, if, if you are using a bonus page, same concept. Most marketers don't do this. And again, sometimes I don't even do it. And again, most of it, if, if I don't do this, it's because I get lazy, right? And because, again, it's one of those boring things that we walk away from because, again, we try to focus on the high-value stuff. But this is, these are little things that when you do them and you do them repeatedly, those little things add up into lots more leads, and those more leads end up being sales. So even if you send people to a bonus landing page, you collect 
the leads from that page with an exit pop too. Same concept. Now, you need to be writing the messages out for this campaign ahead of time. Do not, do not send these people a broadcast email. I promise you, you'll not, not only, number one, you're going to have people coming into this campaign at different times. Number two, you, 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 you cannot help but sound weird if you're trying to broadcast to these folks. If, if, you, if these folks are meeting you for the first time, if you've got them segmented into a list, you need to talk to them differently and you need to write these messages out and you need to think about what you're going to say if they're meeting you for the first time. Number two, if, if it seems like these are folks that might be, let's say, people who have gotten onto this list another way, then you've got to find a way to move them off of this list. So in other words, let's say then that you have people that, <clears throat> I don't know, that for whatever reason, they're on your prospect list and they're getting in your prospect list the second or third time. You have to write something into your emails. You need to think about this. You need to move them off of that list. Does that make sense? So if you get what I'm saying, put the number four in the question box. This is important, folks. And again, the reason we don't do this stuff is because it takes time to set up. You only have to set this stuff up once. You only set it up once. So again, I understand it takes time. I understand that it seems like overkill, but you have to set this stuff up once and even if you start creating other lists, what you're going to do is you're going to just move that over to the new list, right? Okay, so write the messages out for that list ahead of time. Create them as drafts in Aweber, and then add them to your follow-ups. Everybody, if you, if you haven't gone through the course, you can go through the course, and you can learn how to do that. Um, please, exclude these people from your broadcast. I, I, I'm, I'm just, if they're new to you, I don't, I don't care uh, what the industry does. I, I don't care about that. Exclude these people from your broadcast. Um, now, here, here's, here's the exception to the rule. Here's the exception to the rule. If all you're going to send these people is value, you're going to send these people, let's say, to, uh, I mean, a training you're doing, fine. I don't, I don't have any problem with that. Um, I would just say put some, put some effort into thinking about this campaign ahead of time. Now, you need to watch the, the uh, statistics and make adjustments on these, uh, on these follow-ups. Now, AWeber will give you statistics on your follow-ups. I'm not talking about the broadcast statistics. I'm talking about your follow-up statistics. If you find that people are, are not opening up the next email, your next follow-up, that's because something you did in that follow-up, lost, you lost them. Right? You, you, you lost them someplace. And so that's when you go back and you make adjustments to that follow-up because you lost them in the follow-up before that. Does that make sense? If you get that, put the number five in the question box. So in other words, you look at all your statistics, and when the people are coming through, you're going you're gonna to look at how you're affecting them. And again, there's nothing wrong with making adjustments as you go. So watch those statistics to your follow-ups, and then make adjustments based on what's happening in the next follow-up. Now, very important. I know most of you know this. I know I'm preaching to the choir, but I got to preach to the but the choir needs to be preached to anyway. Um, you set up your products to collect emails when there's a purchase made. Uh, standard practice, but not everybody does it. I'm serious because just because you made the sale doesn't mean that it's over. And the, the, the affiliate networks make it easy for you. PayPal does not, right? And I think I went over that. I did, I did go over that in the course. You can still set up your email list to collect leads when you sell something on PayPal. So, so collect the email address. Now, here's the thing. You and I, you may not have the best email address, but you got something. So, so do, do this process. Make sure that when you sell something, that person gets automatically added to your email marketing list. Then, <coughs> um, that, that means you're going to have to set that up with PayPal, and, you're gonna and you can do this with all affiliate platforms. Now, the other thing that you need to do, and I think I talked about this in the advanced course, make sure you turn off double opt-in confirmation when you're collecting purchase emails. Right? After purchase emails, there's no need for you to double opt in. Um, and, and again, you're not, please do not think that you're being sneaky by doing that. 
Um, pe people are not gonna people are not gonna confirm if you try to confirm their email at that point. Again, um, don't overdo trying to be. I guess uh, you you are being ethical by collecting names and email addresses. Does everybody understand the vibe I'm coming from right now? So if you understand what I mean by that, put the number six in the question box. You, 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 you must collect the name and turn off double opt-in. Now if you don't, yeah, don't be overcautious with what, what, uh, what James Landers is saying, exactly. Do not be overcautious, right? Um, you, you, you go ahead and you do it then, and, and you're not necessarily getting the best email address anyway. Understand that. How, how many of you know that more than likely most of us these days who are online marketers and even those of us who are not online marketers, we have a PayPal address and then we have our cool people address. How many of you all know that? So, so, if you, so how many of you all are like that? So how many of you on this call right now, you have a, a PayPal address and you have a cool people address, right? So, so you have an address that cool people can send to you and then you have a PayPal address. What you want to get from people when they sign up is you want their cool people address. So you, you still got to go the next step. And the next step, what I covered in the advanced course is you seek the double opt-in confirmation. Right after the purchase, you still try to get that email address and you do that by offering them another gift. So in other words, they, and again, folks, some of you all are going to say, well, Charles, you didn't do that. Well, again, sometimes I get lazy with this, <laughs> right? And th this is something that is, I, I'm, I'm, I, am, I, am, I am reminding myself just as much as I am reminding you right now. After the purchase, you have to ask people again. Because if you offer somebody something really super cool and you tell them, hey, you know what? You can get this. If you come and you and you and you and you give me your name and email address for this, however you say it, right? Say, hey, hey, I've got something really cool just for being my new customer. Go to this address and you'll get it. And they get there, it's gonna be an opt-in page. If they really want that really cool thing, they're gonna give you their cool people address. And that's the one you want. And then you you're you're going to get a double opt-in confirmation then. This is what I call belt and suspenders. So in other words, you already did collect the lead when you got the, them after purchase, right? Does everybody understand that? You did get the lead. However, you, you go the next step further in the disciplined business case. You try to get their cool people address, the, the email address that they only give to cool people. You want to be there, and you get there by asking them to get your cool stuff by giving them your name and email address. So again, now, I, I, Please do not do this in any case, and, and this is the last thing I'm going to say before we move on, that, that, that please do not uh, uh, tell people that they have to opt in to get their paid product. Please do not do that, right? So don't, don't try to collect their name and email address to get their product. Um, um, give it to them right away, right? They got to become part of your members area, that's fine, but, but again, don't keep it from them. Don't put them in your AWeber address. Don't put them in your AWeber. Um, don't put them in your get response or whatever you're doing. Please do not put them there in order to get the product. Okay, so those are all the things that if you do these things on a regular basis, if you do these things, you will generate more leads that you're probably going to generate if you do not do them. And these are all the things that disciplined people do over and over and over again to get leads that kind of pile up on each other over months, over weeks, over years. When you do these things repeatedly, this is how you build momentum. Okay? Any questions? Okay, very good. Thank you very much, everyone. I appreciate you listening in. Have a great night and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care. Okay, I want to talk to you today about uh, how you can get started with AWeber. And AWeber is a way of marketing your business. And you and I know if you've been around being an entrepreneur or marketing online or marketing in general, you know that the money is in the list. And you and I really do need to become skilled at collecting contact information, names and email addresses. And we do have to use an autoresponder to do that. It's the best way. It's 
It's an automated way to do that. And we want to understand everything that our autoresponder does. AWeber is no different than that. Did you know, I mean, how many of you all knew, if I were to ask you, did you know that AWeber can keep your prospects and your buyers separate in how you communicate them, right? Maybe you knew that. Did you know that you could write messages weeks in advance when you knew there was going to be, when you knew there were going to be good circumstances? You can get in touch and stay with your customers with AWeber. We're going to talk about that a little bit here tonight. And one of the things that you probably realize is that marketing technology, whether you are an online marketer or whether or not you were a brick and mortar business owner, marketing technology is now getting smarter every single day. I mean, you can now do more with less because software is automating more of what we do, right? Most, even the most basic software designer is now able to create one application that takes a place of two or three that used to do the same job. I mean, how many of you all have found that? Now, many of these software designers, many of these applications, they're doing an excellent job of combining applications. You're probably seeing that. You've probably purchased some of them. And you can now have software to build your business pages. You can now have software that helps you to manage your social media instead of having to go in every day. You can have software that actually automates and manages that process. You can have software these days now that helps you to create a logo all by itself. Um, you can have software that helps you to create graphics and infographics. And you can have software that helps you now to create content from scratch. You can have software now that helps you to create sales videos. Pretty amazing, right? You used to have to do all of these things manually. You can have software that automates the payment process. And this is what really makes things exciting about where we're going in marketing technology, where we're going as online marketers, where we're going as entrepreneurs and business owners. Marketing technology, as you know, is now getting more connected. Now, if I lose anyone, it's going to be in the next few seconds. I'm going to tell you and mention a few things that you may or may not know about. There is an application called IFTTT, if this, then that. Basically, all this is, that is something that connects two applications. So these really cool applications we've been talking about, there are now applications that connect those applications. So we have applications like IFT. Zapier, maybe you've heard of that, maybe you haven't, but Zapier is an application that takes those other things that I was telling you about and it connects them. There are web-based services like Wufu that creates forms that connect these services and Jotform. So all of these things that we are using now that used to take, that used to take three or four different ways to do them, now we have them and we can connect them, connect them together. It's really fantastic and really exciting. And you probably realize, you probably purchased some of these things, your social media now integrates with everything, right? So you can integrate social media, Facebook, Twitter, with just about everything. Um, you can now integrate your storage with just about everything. How many of you all own Dropbox or Microsoft Cloud? And you can now connect that with everything. So marketing technology is now getting more and more connected every day. You can now use your WordPress website in particular. You can integrate with just about everything that we have talked about. So you can integrate everything. And now you can even integrate your payments, PayPal and Stripe and anything else you use. Some of you probably even use something called Bitcoin. You can, you can do just about anything that you want and, and, and integrate and connect these things. But now what's the problem with that? Well, the problem is that some of these connections depending on how well you use them and how, how well you keep up with them, okay, they, can, they can add to some confusion. Um, the, the problem typically is not that the software applications don't work. They typically do, right? Um, the, the, the problem is not that the software applications don't integrate. They typically do. And so because they integrate and because they do work, we've got all kinds of choices we have to make, right? Um, and so we tend to get distracted about which we want to do, what we want to do with some of these integrations. And the question is, always comes back down to this, right? Here's what the question is. Do these new applications generate more leads? Do these applications generate more sales? And that's ultimately what you and I have to be able to answer. We have to be able to justify whether or not these software applications actually do that. And if their integration must help me to generate more new leads and sales, 
you, if, if I were to tell you, you know where most of these new applications start? When, when these applications, they look to figure out what they're going to integrate with. Have you ever looked in some of their credibility, uh, some, of the, some of their credibility logos? The, the number one logo that you'll see on all of the new applications is a Weber. Right? Start looking at some of their marketing pages. Start looking at some of the common elements, and here's what you'll find. They establish their credibility by saying, hey, we integrate with a Weber, the autoresponder company that probably just about every new entrepreneur and marketer at least has to make a decision about, even if they don't use it right away. You might ask now, why a Weber? Right? Why a Weber? It's probably because a Weber has an interface that's really intuitive to use. I mean, just about anybody can get started using AWeber and figure out how to write a message. AWeber, now for you technical people, it has software code. And AWeber's been around for a long time. So all that software code is being constantly worked on, constantly refined. That means then that it makes it easy for some of these companies we've been talking about to integrate with them. Their pricing model has been the same for probably over de almost a decade makes a free it always includes a free trial and makes it attractive to new entrepreneurs many of whom get started with AWeber and they never cancel and AWeber's platform is newbie friendly anybody can get in and I said this before can get in and send a message so if AWeber's so cool right obviously there are no problems with it right it's really cool are there any problems with it well if I were to mention a few cons there might be a few cons what what are those cons well AWeber's really super cool key benefits are still really technical, right? You still do have to really understand technical stuff to really get down and get some of the real benefits of it. Um, <clears throat> AWeber has menus that you and I could miss if we weren't told about them ahead of time. So sometimes we can go months, years, lots of long periods of time missing some of the key benefits because we just didn't know they were in the menus. And AWeber does not really require its customers to go through any kind of onboarding before use. Right? So, so they, they assume people already know how to use it. And that can be good and bad. doesn't stop anybody from using it that wants to. But at the same time, though, that means then that you could get in, start using it, get used to it, and never really get to the really cool stuff. And um, AWeber doesn't automatically integrate with all web services. Um, many times it uses that third party that I was telling you about, which is called Zapier. And the core feature of building opt-in pages can really leave the non-technical person behind. Right? That, that's, so, so, so AWeber is fantastic. But if, if there were any cons to it, it would be that. But you and I know that regardless of how we feel about those things not being there, we still have to do list building. We have to build our customer database. We have to build our, our, our list of names and email addresses. That part is vital. It is not an option. And because AWeber is right in the middle of all those integrations, then we want to know how we can use it. So we want to make sure that if all of these new applications are using AWeber, as their, as their source of credibility. If they're, they're saying AWeber makes us credible, that means AWeber is right in the middle. So how are we going to overcome some of these technical barriers? Well, we can get a little bit of assurance, and we put it together in a little course for you that you can find out all about when you click the link that's on this page. All you've got to do is to go straight to that link. We'll tell you more about the course, how you can get it, and how then you can overcome some of these technical barriers that could help you to really build an email list and a contact list that will help you to build your business. So with that, thank you very much, everyone. We appreciate you uh, viewing in. Have a great day and a pleasant tomorrow. Take care. Hello and welcome. You are now looking at AWeber.com, and AWeber.com actually allows you to build and manage an email marketing list. Now, if you don't have an AWeber account, you'll come to this page at aweber.com and then what you'll need to do in order to get started is to put your name and email address into the box in order to start a 30-day free trial. Now if you currently do not have an email marketing list, you will start at Aweber at $19 a month after the 30 days is over.
However, if you're going to be moving your list into AWeber, then you are going to be priced according to the tier that you're going to be on. Any place from $19 a month up to $149 a month. And then once your list size is beyond $25,000, then AWeber will determine that on an as-needed basis. When you get started with AWeber, you are going to have to put in a credit card in order to get started because they're going to want to be able to bill you at the end of the period. And of course, you'll need to decide whether or not you're going to be billed monthly, quarterly, or annually. There are some price breaks if you do so quarterly and annually. Finally, they're going to have you agree to their service agreement. You are going to want to read that for your own information. So now once you've read through the service agreement, you can then sign up for AWeber. AWeber will give you a login and password, and then what you'll need to do is to put that login and password in, in order to log in. Once you are logged in, you will then be ready to start creating lists for your online business. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Hello and welcome. Now in this video, we're going to start the process by creating a list. And what you'll do is you will go inside of your AWeber dashboard. You will go to click the link that says manage lists. And what you'll see here is you'll see a green button that says create a list and you will go and click that button. Now in most cases, AWeber will pre-fill information in here but you can actually change this information so if you are going to be operating under a specific brand you can go ahead and write that brand in here so let's go ahead and do that now as well as the company website now aweber requires that you put a return address in your emails they will pre-populate that information based on what's in your billing now if you want to use a different address you'll need to click this button and then you'll need to change the information once you do that you will then write that address in and then you will save the information now, aweber is going to ask you what sender name and email address that you want to use and in general what you're going to do is you're going to write in a sender name and when you write in the sender email, you want to avoid using emails like Hotmail or Gmail or Yahoo. You want to use a server address email or an email address that you created with your domain name. Now, another thing that you'll want to do that will enhance your deliverability is you want to make sure that this sender email is not something like admin or support. You don't want to use generic names. If possible, you want to use a proper name. There is going to be another step based on the email address that you're going to put here, specifically if you're going to be using an email that you have control of through your domain name. But now, once you have all of the information in, the address you're going to be using, as well as the name and sender name, you can go ahead and click Next Step. AWeber will require you to give your list a name, but typically your customer will not see the name of this list or this explanation unless they choose to unsubscribe. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to describe the list and then give it a name and we're going to keep it brief as you can see here. You can only use 400 characters. So we're going to go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so once you've done that, you are going to then click next step. Now, AWeber has certain pre-approved subject lines, and you can use any of these subject lines that you feel is going to be most appropriate. Now, they will allow you to request approval for a custom subject line. Now, once you actually write the subject line in, AWeber will take time to approve it. In the meanwhile, what they'll use is they'll use one of the default subject lines that are at the top when you first sign in. So we're going to go ahead and click cancel so that we can see these back and we're just going to choose the first one. Now we can also make changes to the confirmation. And so what we can do is we can then make sure that this message or this part of the message says what we want it to say. Now we want to keep this part brief. We don't want to make this a long drawn out paragraph. We want it to be brief so that it spells out exactly what your client is going to be getting when they sign up for your email list. In fact, you'll notice here that this says 
receive email from manager list with a Weber, we might want to restate that to be a little more natural. Okay, but again, we don't make too many changes and we don't make that very long. We can also insert personalization. So in other words, one of the things that we can do is we can actually add in information that will personalize based on the information that is collected. So when your client actually comes and they sign up for your list and they use their first name, we can actually customize that information so that it says their first name and then they'll see the message. So all we would do here is we would click one of these buttons and this will actually personalize the message so that it will say the person's first name and then give them the actual message. And this can sometimes help you with issues of deliverability. But again, that's optional. You don't have to do anything with this information. In fact, you can decide to delete out the information, click the edit button. And you'll notice that that personalization is no longer in this space. We can actually edit the signature and we can put in here a salutation or title. And then once we've done, then all we'll need to do is then we'll need to click this approve message button and then we will then be creating our list. Now, the only thing that really needs to be confirmed will be this subject line if you choose to change it. So we are actually approving the message and then creating the list. And once you've created the list, you'll notice here at the top that Aweber will be working on that particular list and all of the menu fields that we'll be working with will apply to the things that are going to be associated with this one list. If we want to change the list that all of these menus are going to be associated with, all you have to do is use this drop down arrow and then you can choose the list that you actually want. Okay, so we have now created the first list and we will now move on to some of the menu items. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now that you have created a list, you can now import users from another autoresponder into a Weber so that if you have previously had an autoresponder account with another company, you can take those same leads and bring them into your Aweber list. So let's take a look at how to do that. Now, even though every autoresponder company is different, we are going to take a look at GetResponse and we're going to take contacts from GetResponse and we're going to move them into Aweber. And the way that you do this in get response is you'll go to the contacts area. You will then click search contacts. You'll then click view all contacts. You'll then click the specific list and then you'll click search. That will then narrow down all of the contacts that you're going to move into a file and then move into a Weber. So once you have this list inside of GetResponse, you'll click the actions and then you'll click export. You'll then write a file name and then you'll click the export button. Once you've done that, GetResponse will give you the opportunity to then click a download button to get your file. Now that your list has been moved, you can now go back to the Aweber dashboard. What we're going to do is we're going to import that list in the CSV file into the list that we have just created inside of a Weber. We can do that by going to the subscriber area and then we're going to go and click add subscribers. We're going to take a look at this button that says import more than 10 subscribers. We're then going to click this button and then grab the file that we Create it from get response. A Weber will bring you to this screen and you'll be asked whether or not you want to import subscribers from a file or into your subscribers manually. Typically what you're going to do if you're going to be bringing people over from another autoresponder and you have a fairly big file, you can then click to browse and then go and grab the file from your hard drive. Now, the most important thing is that you match up the name and email address fields. And then 
what you'll do is you will then move to the next screen inside of a Weber. And you do that by clicking the next button at the bottom of the page. Now, AWeber is going to want to know how you brought the list over. So in this particular case, you're going to say yes, you brought it over from another email provider. You're going to choose the email provider here. Once you do that, then what you're going to do is you're going to click this button that says they signed up with you, or you'll choose the appropriate section. So in this particular case, we're going to go ahead and write in the explanation, and then we're going to click Next. Now, AWeber will ask if you want to have a follow-up message sent, or if you don't want to have one sent. Now, in this particular case, we're not going to have one sent, but you can opt to have one sent if that is what you want to do with these subscribers. We're going to click No, and then we're going to click Next. Now you can decide whether or not you want your subscribers to opt in again, or you can decide not to. In this particular case, we're going to say no, and then we're going to click next. Now what you can do in this case is you can actually have the subscribers tagged, and this is an identifier inside of AWeber. You'd be able to reuse this designation in other cases. So in this particular case, we're going to write in affiliate. And then we're going to click Finish Import. Okay, so once you have done this, then it's going to take some time for a Weber to actually go through the process of looking at your list to see if it is acceptable for them to bring it into your list. You can always check your history by going to this Import History page, and we can take a look here. Now, in some cases, AWeber will tell you right away if you've had subscribers added and then how many were actually not added. They'll actually give you a breakdown here in this link. Okay, so then you'll have a number of email subscribers that have been added to your list and you can then start to market to them using AWeber. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we're going to pick it up from the basic settings and we're going to now go to this link that says personalize your list. Now you'll recognize the company branding that we did when we set up the list. You'll recognize the website URL. Now we didn't write an email signature in here. Now let's go ahead and write in an email signature as well as to upload an image into the logo area. So now that we have our branding in place, what we can now do is we can now start to customize our broadcast archive. We can do that by first connecting with Twitter. And what this button is going to do is it's going to allow us to connect to Twitter so that our Twitter followers will actually get a copy of our broadcast as we send it out. So all we have to do is click this connect with Twitter button and it will integrate with the Twitter account that we currently have open. Now, if you are already logged into Twitter, all you'll have to do is click this Authorize app. If you are not currently logged into Twitter, you will need to connect to your Twitter account in order to give access to AWeber so that it can connect with the app. So we are now going to go ahead and click this Authorize app button. And so now our Twitter account is now connected to our broadcast archive. We can do the same thing using Facebook. And you'll see a button here that will allow you to click and then connect to Facebook where you'll have access to all of your pages to actually publish your emails to your Facebook account. So when you click this button, it will connect to Facebook. What you're going to notice is that you will have access to all of the pages where you are an admin. Now, this will only work if you are already logged in to Facebook. And obviously, if you're not logged into Facebook, when you click that connect button, you'll need to log in. Once AWeber connects to your Facebook account, it'll pull in all of the pages where you are an admin if you will not be using your broadcast on those pages. You can actually go in and you can X them out. So in this case, that's what we're going to do. We're going to X out all but one page that we'll be using for our email broadcast. And once you have that connection, you're going to want to make it your default Facebook post. 
So what will then happen is that you will have the opportunity inside of all of your broadcasts to post them automatically to this Facebook page. Now there are a couple of other settings that we'll want to take a look at for our broadcast archive. Now what we can do in our broadcast archive is we can actually include some place where someone can sign up as well as our Twitter link. Before we do that, let's take a look where this link says preview your archive and then we can get a better sense of what a broadcast archive actually is and how you can use it. And you'll see here that the email broadcast archive is a page that's hosted by Aweber that will have a number of your broadcast emails. And you will be able to determine which of your broadcast emails actually go in to this broadcast archive. And you'll actually see that in a later video. But this broadcast archive will allow others who are not part of your email marketing list to read your content and then to be able to sign up for your email. We'll also be able to follow you on social media and to subscribe to you by RSS. Now the last thing we're going to discuss in this video is your being able to have a look at what your unsubscribe page is going to look like. And this is what your clients will see when they decide to click the unsubscribe link in your email, you'll be able to see what it looks like based on your branding. So again, now you can see where your client will actually see your list name and your description. So keeping this in mind, you can write your description accordingly, knowing that someone will actually see it when they get ready to unsubscribe. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to go over the custom field setting and you'll find it by going to the list options menu and then clicking custom fields. Now a custom fields setting is for each individual list. So for the list that we created, we can create a certain kind of information that Aweber will store and that we can collect on any particular web form that we have when we create one. So for example, we can collect an address, a phone number, and we can create any kind of field that we want based on our business. So in this particular case, we're going to create a custom field that we will use in a later sign up form. Now one of the things that we can do is we can give our subscribers the opportunity to update this information when they actually go to their subscriber options. So this would allow your subscriber to actually go back even if they didn't have the opportunity to sign up with their birth date, they could change their subscriber options after the fact. So we'll click subscriber update and then we will click add. So now what we have is we have a custom field that we'll be able to add to any of our sign up forms when we create them for a customer's birth date and we can continue to add fields up to 25. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to set up our list automation, and we can do that by going to the list options menu and then clicking on list automation. Now list automation allows us to move people between lists when certain actions happen. And this is a very easy way for us to be able to segment our list. We can subscribe members to certain lists when they subscribe to a list. We can unsubscribe members from a list when they subscribe to a list. And we can basically control these actions by creating an automation rule. Now you can see the automation rule by clicking the down arrow. And these are all of the automation rules that are available to us. We can unsubscribe a person from this list when they subscribe to a certain list that we already have. We can unsubscribe someone from this list when they unsubscribe from a certain list. We can subscribe someone to this list when they subscribe to another list. And this is a great way of being able to get people onto lists when they take certain actions. Now, creating a rule is as simple as determining which list you want to interact with and then setting the rule. 
so we can have someone unsubscribe from this list when they become part of a certain list. Now this will be of particular use to us when we automate the process of putting someone onto our email marketing list when they actually make a purchase. So that if someone is part of the list that we're on, and this happens to be a prospect list or a new introductory customer list, we can have that person removed from that new introductory customer list to a more focused customer list when they purchase a certain product. This allows us to market effectively. And we can do that all inside of our list automation. So once we determine the list interaction, all we do is click the save automation rule. And then we have the rule in place. If we decide that we don't like the rule and it isn't working the way we'd like it to work, we can actually go to the delete button and take the rule out. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now going to go to the reports menu, and we are now going to take a look at the settings. And what you'll notice is that the settings are actually the analytics setup. And this will allow you to track your activity to your email so that you'll be able to tell what kind of email you sent that caused sales, what kind of emails that you sent that caused certain activities. And this is a very good way of getting intelligence on how effective your email is. Now, there are a couple of steps in order to get analytics set up on your site with your email. Now, you'll notice here that step one, Aweber talks about the premium analytics and the suite of features. And the first thing you're going to need to do is you're going to need to copy this HTML code onto every page that you like to track. So in other words, wherever you want to track activity on your site, you'll need to copy this code and then place it inside of the body tag. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to copy this tag. We're going to right click and we're going to copy. And then we're going to head to our website. Now Aweber instructs you to put that JavaScript code within the body tags. Now, if you were to use one of the popular web page builders for WordPress, which is Optimized Press, you would put that tracking code in this area where it says after the body tag, and you'd place this here. What you would do then is you would then click Save Settings. Once you did that, it would be time to head back to Aweber. And then you'd click the Continue to Step 2 button. Once you did that, you would want to then write in the web address where you actually placed the analytics code. Once you had the web address, you would click the Add button. Now, Aweber is officially tracking website clicks on the site where you place the web address. Now, what we want to do within Aweber, and it gives us the opportunity to do, is to track sales. And we can do that by putting in a goal web page. Now, after website clicks, what you'd want to do is you'd want to track sales. So you'd want to place in this space a page where your client has to go one time after they have completed a sale. Now, you'd write in the goal description once you did that. So you'd pick up a page in your website that is a thank you page that your customer would visit one time. So in this case, we might select a download page that your customer would actually visit. And then we take the address of that page and we'd head back to a Weber. And what you do is you'd place the page in the goal page URL. You would describe the goal and then you would track the particular event inside of Aweber. So you can track sale, CPC, CPM, or a page hit. And you could determine a particular monetary value for the page once it had been hit. So in this particular case, we can track a sale. We can say that the monetary value of hitting that page is $17. And then we can click the Add button. When you're tracking sales, you want to try to get a page that your client will visit one time. 
verification with AWeber. If a customer visits this page twice, it will actually be counted twice. And that might throw off your monetary value. So you do want to keep that in mind. Now, one last area that is optional, but you'd want to actually place here would be making sure that you want your IP address to be ignored in the statistics. And you can do that by finding your own IP address. And if you go to the website, whatsmyipaddress.org, you will be able to find out what your IP address is. You can actually place that inside of a Weber. Once you've gathered that IP address and you've written it in, you can actually click add. And you can add any number of IP addresses that you think will actually throw off your stats if you were visiting the pages where you are actually tracking goals. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. You are now looking at the Reports tab inside of AWeber, and what you'll notice is that in this Reports tab, if you go to the Reports tab and you go to the Individual Reports link, that'll bring you to the Reports dashboard. And there are two sections of the Reports dashboard. You can look at your account overall, or you can look at the individual statistics for one particular list, which is the one you have enabled in the right-hand corner. Now, if you look at your activity in any particular area, you can look at the data or you can look at it according to individual leads. You can also look at it in detail if you click this link. You can look at your accounts over time or you can look at it on a particular day, as you can see here. You can do the very same thing by looking at your account in aggregate in the account reports area. Now, if you want to look at the account's revenue and what your email is giving you over time, you are going to need to track activity and set goals. So when we set the analytics or the settings area in the reports tab, you will need to make sure that you are tracking the activity based on revenue goals that you set in the reports settings area. This is how AWeber tracks your revenue inside of your reports, bringing it down to the detail level with individual leads, as well as detail down to the day. But again, if you don't track the revenue from inside of the settings area on each individual page, you will not have any detail for account revenue over time. That is the only way that you're going to be able to get it. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We will now look at the signup forms, and you can get to the signup forms by going to the signup forms tab and clicking this link. Now, when you first reach the sign up forms tab, you can actually click this button, which will take you through a wizard. We're going to go ahead and we're going to click this green button to create our first sign up form. This is actually going to bring us to a screen where we can actually design our own opt in form using the templates that you see here or a plain transparent template, which you'll see here. You'll also notice that there are fields, and you'll notice that we have a field that was created earlier in our custom fields area. So if you want to create another custom field, all you need to do is to click this button, create a new field. It's the same field function that we found in the list options. Now this template builder will allow you to preview each form as you build it, so that if you want to know what your form is actually going to look like, you can click this preview button. Now, if you get this error message, that means then that you have pop-ups blocked and you'll need to enable them in order to see your preview. Now, in Google Chrome, this will mean going to the right-hand side. You'll need to click this button and then you'll need to click Always Allow Pop-ups from AWeber and then click Done. Once you've done that, you can then click the Preview button and then you'll see your form there. You may still get the message to appear again, but you'll be able to preview your form. When you click the message inside of AWeber, it goes away. Now, each element of your signup form has detail that can be changed. For example, you can change the detail in the header by clicking this link. 
and you'll notice that you can change the background color or the border and you can even go into some of the advanced options to put in images and to pad some of the margins. And each individual field will have this kind of detail. We can do detail for the body and you'll notice that you have the same options available. You can look at detail for labels, which in this case would mean you can change the font on the text, make it larger or smaller. You can look at detail on the inputs, which is actually what goes into the text boxes, which you can control again using advanced options. You can actually change the detail on the links. You can also change the detail on the submit button. Now, one thing you'll note about the submit button is when you click the advanced options, you'll notice that a Weber is using a certain button image. If you'd like to use a different button image or you'd like to use a button image on your page, you can actually do that by putting the address of that button in this link. You can look at detail in the footer area. And once again, you have all of the images that you can actually have available to you as well as margins and spacing. You can take out elements in your form by going to this top bar. And for example, if we want to see the form without the header, we want to see it without the footer, we want to see it without the privacy warning, if we want to see it without powered by a Weber, we can actually do that. And once again, we can always check our preview to see exactly how our form is going to look. We can close out, click the message, and the message goes away. Now to go back to the other menu, we will want to go back and click form type, and then that'll bring us to two other aspects of the design of the opt-in form. And you'll notice that this form that we're looking at right now is considered to be an inline form. We can actually look at a different form and we can look at a popover. And again, we have all of the options available to us in order to change the popover. We can also preview the popover. And we can do that by clicking the preview button. And you'll see how the popover is actually going to look. We can also do a light box. And we can preview the light box to see how that's going to look, which darkens the entire screen and saves your opt-in box so that the visitor can see it. We can also do a pop-up. And once again, this is how your pop-up will look over the page. We can change the width of the overall form. And it can be smaller, or we can actually change it this way also by using the handles. But once you've determined how you want your opt-in form to look, you're going to click Go to Step 2. Now, when we create an individual form or an individual purpose, we'll want to name that form. We can actually do that here in the basic settings. It's quite possible that we'll create a form for this list, but for a different purpose. And we'll be naming that in a different. So we will go ahead and name this form and we can click save. Now we are going to stop the video at this point and we are going to come back and we're going to finish step two of setting up your form. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now at step two of setting up our sign-up form. And what you're going to notice is that there is a thank you page that you get to customize. And this thank you page actually appears as soon as your client types in their name and email address. Now we can preview that page so that we can actually see what it looks like. And it is instructive to do because you'll want to determine which of these thank you pages that you actually want. Now you will see that there is a basic version and you can click the preview button to actually view it. And so you'll recognize that your logo is there and then you have some verbiage that says you're almost done, activate your subscription. We can actually change that now to the audio version 
And to do that, we'll just go to this drop down menu. And to look at the audio version, we'll go to look at the drop down menu. We'll click audio version and then we'll click preview. In a moment, you will receive an email message asking you to confirm your email address and activate your subscription. Please check your email inbox now. Open that email and click on the confirm link. Once you do, your subscription will immediately be activated. So now if you want the audio version, you can actually have that audio playing. And there is another version that we can look at. It is the smart video version. And we can preview that version now. Please check your inbox now to confirm your subscription. And the last way that you can actually do it is you can use your own custom page. So if you want to customize your thank you page, you can actually make it so that your customer will then see what you want them to see. Now remember, the most important part to this is that they go and confirm their subscription. This is not going to be the place where you want to do any marketing, with the exception of using your logo for your brand. Now you'll also notice that there is an already subscribe page and all this does is when the client is actually trying to sign up for your email marketing list, they will be shown a message that says that they are already subscribed. And like the thank you page, you can customize your own page and place it here in this link. Now there are some advanced settings and we'll take a look at those right now. And we can determine for each individual list how we want the follow-up messages to start. Now these are the messages that are going to appear automatically in your client's email box if you have them set up. So if you don't have any auto-responding outgoing messages set up, you don't have to worry about this. Now if you're going to be putting JavaScript code on your thank you page, your custom thank you page, you can actually have the form pass information so that you can personalize that page. This would allow your client to see their name and or email address on the thank you page when they sign up. And it is a way for you to be more effective in getting them to actually see the value in going to get what you've promised them when they sign up for your email marketing list. Okay, so that is all for step two. We will now go to step three. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now ready to go on to step three and we'll want to save any changes that we made in step two by clicking the green button. That will save our form and then we're going to click go to step three. You're going to have a section where if you are comfortable installing your form using HTML, you can click this box. If you're going to have your web designer or coder install your form, you can actually send them an email through this link and if you're going to have Aweber host the form on their site, you can actually do that also. So we're going to start by looking at the first choice, which is I will install my form. But once you open the install my form link, you'll see that there are two sides. You'll see a JavaScript snippet and a raw HTML snippet. Now let's talk about the two snippets. Now the JavaScript snippet when you take this code and you place it on your website, any changes that you make inside of Aweber will be made on your website automatically. So you don't have to make any changes in the code in order to change something that happens in Aweber. That is not the case if you place the raw HTML code. The HTML code you use, if you make any changes in Aweber, you're going to have to come back and get the code again to have those changes reflected on your website. Now another difference inside of the raw HTML version is that you'll notice that there is a box here that you can include beautiful form styles or you can uncheck them. And you'll notice that the code actually changes. Now in some cases when you're testing or when you're just trying to get a form to work, you should use a basic unformatted form and this will put the basics onto your website in the code using the form that you create inside of Aweber. Now if you do want the additional formatting that Aweber offers, you can actually use the beautiful form styles. So we're going to now close the install my form box. I'm going to open up the my web designer will install my form and what you'll notice is that all that's here is your designer's email and a message. So what this will do is this will allow you to send a message to your designer with the code so that they can put it onto your website. 
Lastly, you'll see here that there is a box here that says, have a Weber host my form. And what you have is a URL that you can actually have someone come to in order to opt into your list. So for example, if we were to copy this link and then put it inside of our browser, let's take a look. And you'll see here that the form is on the web and we don't have to host it. We don't have to use any code. All we do is share the link and then someone can actually opt in to our list. So we're now going to close. We've now covered all the ways that we can place our form on our website. Now let's go to an actual WordPress website to see how this is going to actually work. So what we're going to do is we're going to install the form ourselves. We're going to grab the JavaScript snippet. We're going to copy it. And then we're going to head to a WordPress website. And what we're going to do is we're going to go to the side of WordPress where we post HTML code. We're then going to put in our code. And then we're going to give this post a title. And now what we're going to do is we're going to publish this post. And we're now going to view our opt-in form on our website. And you'll see the form now on a post inside of our WordPress website. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now going to talk about one of the main integrations that you'll be using with your Aweber account. And what you'll notice is that at the very top to the right, there is a link that says My Apps. That link will take you to all of the applications and online websites that will connect to Aweber and integrate into their service. Now we are going to talk about that in a later video, but right now we want to talk about the connection between Aweber and one in particular, which is PayPal. And we can integrate into PayPal so that every time someone purchases something through our PayPal account, we can actually have that person add it automatically to our email marketing list. And so in order to do that, we're going to click PayPal in order to get started. We'll then want to click integrate with PayPal. We'll then want to click this enable button. You'll then need to grant permission to Aweber inside of your PayPal account and you're going to click grant permission. That will bring you back inside of Aweber and you'll be required then to go through a few more steps. What you'll want to do is you'll want to go to the instant payment notifications page inside of your PayPal account, just as the instructions say here. You're then going to click the choose IPN settings. PayPal will then require you to put in an instant notification settings notification URL. You'll then copy this notification URL and then you will paste it in the box inside of PayPal. You will then click the receive IPN messages and then you will click the save button. Then inside of the PayPal integration, you're going to choose the list to add people to when they purchase a certain product. Now, because you're likely to create multiple products, you will probably want to check this box that says, I want to add people to different lists when they purchase specific items from my store. So go ahead and click this link. And then what you're going to do is you're going to choose the product and then you're going to choose the list. Once you've done that, you are going to click the add button. And then you will have an integration so that whenever a person purchases this product from you with your PayPal button, they will then be added to your Aweber list. And then every time you create a product, you'll want to come back to this integration and then continue to add products to different lists inside of Aweber. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. It's quite possible that you are already working with a web service that is already connected to your autoresponder, or if you use Aweber, it's already connected. 
Now, in many cases, those integrations are direct. Affiliate networks, social media platforms, shopping carts, all of them have direct application and integrations with AWeber. However, in some cases, the integration is not as direct. And when that is the case, you'll see something like what we're about to showcase right now. For example, if we want to integrate GoToWebinar with AWeber, we would click this link. And we would find that this integration actually happens through a third party company called Zapier. So to start this process with GoToWebinar in AWeber, just as we would do with any other app that uses Zapier, we click the Enable button. This will actually take us to the third party site Zapier. Now Zapier has both a free and paid account and you'll have to determine how much you'll be using based on the pricing. But you'll be able to see the potential integrations with GoToWebinar as well as AWeber. For example, you can add GoToWebinar registrants to an AWeber mailing list. So in other words, someone signs up for your webinar, they get automatically added to your AWeber list. Someone signs up to your AWeber list, they get automatically added to your GoToWebinar. So you'll have to choose the integration that you actually want, and then you'll need to get started with Zapier. And in this particular case, Zapier says you'll need a GoToWebinar account active and an AWeber account. That's going to be the case with any integration you do. You're going to need access to the services that you're going to want to integrate. In this case, we're working with GoToWebinar and AWeber. We're going to click Create This Zap. Now, GoToWebinar and AWeber require a premium trigger. So, at some point in your process, you are going to have to pay Zapier in order to have this trigger happen. But we're going to click Continue. Now Zapier is going to require that we log in to GoToWebinar. Now we'll come back to Zapier once we've logged in and we're going to click Continue. Now you're going to have access to the account that you are now logged into or you can connect a different GoToWebinar account. You want to click the Test button to make sure that your account is actually working with Zapier. So go ahead and click the Test button. You want to make sure that you have the green Success button and then you'll click Save and Continue. You'll then select a webinar and then click continue. You'll then want to click fetch and continue. Once you click your test and you'll see that it's successful, you can then click continue. So the AWeber action is going to be to create a subscriber. We're going to click continue. We're going to test or connect an AWeber account and then click save and continue. So we've chosen our account, we've now chosen the list, and now what we want to do is to click Continue. So we want to test the system through Zapier, so we'll click Create and Continue. We've actually already added this email to the list, so we'll skip the rest of the test and then click Continue. And because this is a premium service, Zapier is going to look for a payment at this point. You can pay monthly, or you can pay annually, or choose to upgrade your account in order to continue with the integration. Now, this integration is premium through Zapier. In some cases, your integration will be direct. If you must have the integration, then Zapier will be the easiest way to have that integration done. And if not, and you want to just do it manually, you can do it that way. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We're now going to go to the Messages tab, and we're going to go to the first tab, which is called Drafts. When we go to the Drafts tab, what you're going to notice is that you have a page where you can create a message, and you can create a draft. Now, this screen will have all of the emails that you create inside of AWeber that have not been saved, added to broadcast, or added to follow-ups. So because AWeber auto-saves your email, you will be able to keep track of all of the emails that you are writing and you will be able to have them in this area. Now, in order to get started writing an email, what you're going to do inside of the draft button is you're going to click create a message. Now you have three choices. 
you can either click the drag and drop email builder, which is what you will use in most cases because this will send the most attractive emails. You can send an email by plain text if you have a specific reason as to wanting to send plain text emails to a certain list. Or you can also use the HTML editor if you know HTML extremely well. Now, because most entrepreneurs will be using the drag and drop editor, we're going to actually start with this builder. So let's click this link. Now, there are several elements that you want to be familiar with inside of the draft screen. The first you want to be familiar with is going to be the template box. We can actually use some of the pre-formatted templates that Aweber gives us in order to send out our email. Now, of course, we can change any of these templates to be what we want them to be if they suit our message. Now, if you want to write a plain message to your email marketing list, all you'll need to do is to click this plain tab. And indeed, this is the default setting. So you don't really even have to choose this template. You will actually have this template inside of your message writer by default. Now, if you want to use a different format, you can do that. You can use a center aligned format or you can continue to use the left aligned format. Now, in order to get back to the writing screen, what we're going to do is we're going to click inside of this box and that's going to bring us back to the Aweber screen. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at all of the elements that we can actually add inside of our Aweber email. So we're going to start by writing a message and we're going to edit it as we go along. So we have our content and what we're going to do is we're going to put our cursor inside of the body and we're going to cut and paste our text. Now that we have our text inside of our email, we can actually start editing this email so that it actually looks the way we want it to be. Now, one of the things that we're going to need to do is we're going to need to take out some of the titles. So now that we have our content inside of our email, let's take a look at some of the things that we can do. Now we can always change the appearance of the text and make it larger for our client. And all we would need to do is to highlight the text and then change the size. We can make the size anything that we actually want within this box. So now that we have the text at the size that we actually want it, what we're going to do is we're going to personalize the email. Now, one of the things that you'll notice at the very beginning is that this email is going to be personalized. And it's being personalized with a common personalization code, which is first name fix. That means that Aweber will look at the code and it will try to determine the first name based on what's in the box. And this is actually a better code than just first name. It will look at all the available information and try to put the best fit for the first name. So in most cases, you will continue to use first name fix. However, you could use a different personalization code. And if that is the case, then what you do is you go to the personalize field, you pull the drop down menu and you choose one. For example, you could use the full name or you could even use the last name. So whatever personalizes the email for your market and your niche, that is what you want to use in the personalization area. We're going to go ahead and take this information out. And one of the things you'll notice at the bottom here is that Aweber is auto-saving our email. But we do want to make sure that we put a title in here so that we'll know what we've actually worked on when we look in the draft area. Now, what we can do as we go along is we can actually preview and test the email to find out what our clients are actually going to see. Now, one other thing that we're going to do in this video is we're going to take a look at the background color of our email. Now, naturally, we have a white background because that is the default setting. However, you can change the background color. We can click that link and we can make that background color whatever we want. If we wanted it to be a little more gray, we could click apply. 
It's a very easy way of adding some kind of branding to what we're actually writing. We can actually go back to this background color and then click apply. And every time we go along, what we're going to do is we're going to click preview and test so that we can actually get a sense for how this email is going to look when it appears in the inbox of our client. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go back, we're going to continue to work on this email and we're now going to click save. When we click save, you'll notice that the auto save number goes up by one. And now we can continue adding things to this email. And we will do that when we come back in the next video. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in that next video. Welcome back. We're now going to pick it up inside of the writing screen. And inside of the text editor, you have all of the same editing features that you would have in any other word processing document. So, for example, once we place the cursor inside of here, what you'll see is that you have a toolbar that is enabled to you. So that means that you can take any of these words and you can make them bold. And by clicking the B, you can take the bold off. You can do the same thing for italics and clicking again and turning the italics off, underline and strike through. You can also change the actual color of a particular text by clicking apply and then when you take the highlighter off you'll see it. You can change it back to black. You can actually highlight a background. So for example we could take this text and we can actually put a yellow background there and you'll see that there is a background. We can take that background right back off and click apply. So you have all of the same text features that you would have inside of any word processing document. You can also bullet point and you can take the bullet point off. Now you'll notice that it didn't go back exactly the way you wanted it to, so you may have to do some editing. So you want to make sure that you can work with all of the features inside of your word processing to make your document look the way you want. And again, remember that all you'll need to do is to click the preview and test button to take a look at how it's actually going to appear to your client. Now Aweber will allow you some drag and drop features inside of your newsletter. So what you could do is you can use any of the features that you see on the left hand side menu by dragging and dropping. So for example, we can drag and drop a headline in here. And we can write that headline in. And we can take that box right back out. Now one thing that you may be doing is you may be adding an image and you can actually do that by writing in and dragging and dropping the image inside of the editor. And you can take the editor back out. You can drag and drop a video into your box. And what you'll notice when you actually set up the settings for this video we do that by clicking inside of the video. We can actually put a video URL inside of here and we can actually have the thumbnail to appear. So let's do that right now. We can write in the title and then we can even determine the destination URL for the video. If we decide we don't want it, we can take it right back out. We can add in a button or a button code. And of course, if we click on top of the button, then we can actually send people based on them clicking that button to the page that we want them to go. And we can take that button right back out. We can add in our social media contact, Facebook and Twitter. 
And by clicking on Facebook and or Twitter, we can actually customize where we want those links to go. We can add in a product link, and this is much the same as a buy button. So we can actually edit the image. We can add an image, and then we can have it linked. We can have our button, which will send people to a page. So we have total customization over this particular product image. We can add in a coupon. And of course, we can actually write in what we want to see inside of that coupon and take it back out. And then we can add in our logo. Now again, with all of these images, we can actually size these down to what we want them to be. We can click inside and adjust them from there. Of course, we can add in our signature. In this case, we would add that here at the bottom. And we can even add in a divider. Lastly, we can add in share buttons. We can do that, put that at the bottom of our email. And this will give people the opportunity to share the content on their social media. Finally, if you do something and you don't like the way it looks, you can always go and do the undo button or use the redo button, which will take you back one step to where you actually started. And then you can have the text where you were. And of course, Aweber is auto saving your information as you go. You can always go back to a previous version at a particular time. But the best way to do that, if you can, is to use the undo and or redo buttons. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. When you have completed your drafts, one of the things that you can do is you can actually place that draft inside of your follow-up series. And these are actually your autoresponder emails. So in this particular case, what we're going to do is we're going to start this video by clicking the Add to Follow-up series. Aweber is going to give us a message and let us know that this is going to be the first follow-up message. So in other words, when a subscriber signs up for this list, they're going to confirm their email address and this email is going to be the first one they're going to receive. We're going to go ahead and click the Add to Follow-up series. Now Aweber is actually going to place you inside of the follow-up area. And you'll notice then that you can now place your messages in order according to how your customer is going to actually see them. And these messages are going to be sent automatically. Now each of the autoresponder messages are going to have settings. So for example, let's say that we create a second and third message. And we're going to do that quickly and then we're going to take a look at how we customize the settings. Now we have gone to the draft section to draft both of our emails and what we're going to do is we're actually going to move these to the follow-up area. So we're going to click add to follow-up series. And what you're going to notice is with this email, follow-up number two comes one day after the previous one. We can actually customize this number. We can set it to two, we can set it to three, we can set it to wherever we want it to be. We can also have it to appear at a different time. So for example, we can have it to appear on a certain day if we need to, or we can have it appear at a certain time. We can actually customize when this email is going to appear to all of our clients. We can actually send this email according to each subscriber's local time if we click this link. And then we can actually make it so that all of the days and times will apply to all of the messages in the list. Now we're not going to do that in this particular case. We're just going to add this to the follow-up series. Now we have two messages in our follow-up. The second one actually comes one day after the first and it starts at 9 a.m. 
We can now go back to the draft area. And then we can set the message for the third message. We can add that to the follow-up series. And we can make it so that this message actually comes three days after message number two. We can then click add to follow-up series. And now what we basically have is we have a campaign that we are determining whether or not the campaign actually works. Now once we have determined that this campaign is actually effective, one of the things that we can do is we can actually share this campaign. And we can do that by going to this campaign sharing link. And we can choose to share our follow-ups. We can choose to share our broadcasts. Or we can choose to share our follow-ups and our broadcasts. Now in this particular case, we are going to choose to share our follow-ups. So we're going to click Save. And when we do that, you'll notice that AWeber is going to give us a campaign code. That campaign code is now going to disappear, but that campaign code now appears in this area. What this means now is that we can actually share this campaign code with someone else who wants to use the same messages in their business. And they would do that by coming to their AWeber account and loading that campaign code in this space that says use a predefined campaign code. So the messages that we are the messages that we are creating right now are technically called autoresponder. They actually arrive into the email box of our client automatically when they sign up for our email marketing list. Now these are different from broadcast emails. And one of the things that you will have to determine is whether or not you'd like to write your emails and send them out as broadcasts or whether or not you'd like to have them go automatically to your customers and your clients. So what we're going to look at next is we're going to look at broadcast emails. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. In most cases, you are going to be sending out an email to your email marketing list using the broadcast feature in AWeber. This means that you are writing the message from scratch and you are sending out this message at some particular point in time. Now, you can send out the message at a point in time before it actually has to go out. However, you are writing these messages individually, one at a time, to arrive at your subscriber's email box at a random time. So let's compose an email in our draft area. So we have now composed our email and we're now going to click save and exit. And we're going to send out this email as a broadcast to our entire subscriber list. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the send options and we're going to schedule a broadcast. Now you'll notice that if you decide that you want to change the subject line, you can actually change it in this field or you can leave it as it is. And in the first section, there are some decisions that you can actually make. So for example, we can click the edit button and we're going to notice that you can actually produce your own broadcast archive. Now that broadcast archive is actually already branded because we did that in an earlier video. So for example, let's take a look as to how this broadcast archive will actually appear. Now right now we don't have any emails, but you'll notice there is our logo. You'll notice there is an opt-in page. And what we can do is we can share this broadcast archive just as we would any other web page. So when we publish to a broadcast archive, it's almost like publishing to a web page. And the same thing is going to be true with our RSS feed. Now we can also post to our social media accounts and we can do that to a particular page or a particular Twitter account. And we can do that by connecting to a new account in these areas. Now we're not going to do that right now. We've actually already determined in our settings that we are not going to connect to Twitter or Facebook, but you can so that your broadcast email will appear there. When you have made all of your choices in this area, what you're going to do is you're going to click apply. Now, the next stage is who is actually going to receive the message. And this is actually going to be very important. So we're going to click the edit button. Now, in this particular case, 
we can actually send the emails to just the people who are going to be on this list or we can actually include everyone on all of our lists. And typically, if you're going to have a broadcast email, you'll send it to everyone on all of your list. Or you can exclude some lists or include others. So in some cases, what you could do is you could include everyone in three lists and exclude everyone that would be part of another list. You have maximum flexibility over how you're going to actually structure who actually receives this email. Now the other thing that you can do is you have some choices about who within those email lists actually are going to receive this email. In this drop down arrow you notice that you can actually send to the active subscribers. You can actually send to subscribers that have only been added since today or yesterday or seven days or in the past year. What this does is this actually allows you to send to people who you can segment based on a certain pattern and then you can actually market to them more effectively. Once you've determined who is actually going to receive your message, whether or not they're going to be included or excluded on your list, or whether or not they're going to be added at a particular time, you're then going to click apply. Now another thing that you can do is you can determine when this email is going to be sent. You can click the edit button and you can actually time this email so that it can be sent at a particular day on a particular time. We can go into the future. And send on any day that we actually feel this email is appropriate to send. Once we've determined when we want it to be sent, we can click apply. Now we can actually take, make it so that the timing is going to be immediate. We'll just cancel this. And then we will leave it at immediate. And that is the default. Now the last two options are that we can actually track clicks on the website links in this message and we can have email statistics sent to us a short period of time after the email is actually sent. Now what we're going to do in the next email is we're actually going to show you how to put website links inside of your emails because this is what you're actually going to be tracking inside of your quick stats and you're actually going to be tracking clicks and Aweber is going to tell you how your email is actually faring with those who have received it. Once you've determined who is going to receive your email, you can actually click send message now. Now, if you have decided to send this message into the future, for example, let's move this email to a date in the future and we click this button, it's actually going to schedule the message for that particular time. And you'll notice that message is now scheduled. We can actually go and unschedule this message if we do not want it to be sent. Once that happens, that email is then returned to the draft area. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in this video, we are going to focus just on creating links inside of your emails. And these links can be created for broadcast emails. They can also be created for follow-up emails. What we're going to do is we're going to edit a message in our drafts area and we can click the edit link. And that brings us to the edit screen. Now in order to place a link, all you'll need to do is you'll need to place the link someplace in the body of your email. Now there are several ways of being able to do this. You can actually place the actual URL and create a link with it. For example, we can create a link in this way. Now you'll see the entire URL there and you actually don't need that in order to place the link inside of your email. It will be there for reference to the people who are going to be reading it. Now what you're going to do in order to create an active clickable link is you're going to highlight this link. Then you're going to click the link icon. That's going to open up into a dialog box. And what we're going to do is we're going to take that URL. We're going to place it inside of this URL. And what you'll notice is that there is an HTTP here, an HTTP here, 
And what we need to do is we need to make sure that we backspace so that all that appears there is the HTTP on the left side and then the URL on the right side. Now, if the URL is formatted correctly, you're going to see a green success bar here. And then you're going to click OK. You'll then see that this link is going to be a different color. That means that the link is going to be clickable. Now, it doesn't mean that the link is going to be rendering. We are going to need to check that before we actually send. But for this stage of the process, it is a correct link. Now, another way to send a link, obviously, is to hyperlink inside of your text. And you can do that by going inside and actually highlighting text, going to the link icon, and then placing the URL inside. And you'll notice then that the HTTP actually goes away all by itself. We're going to click OK. So now we've created two different kinds of links. We can also just write in a phrase someplace in our text, and we can hyperlink that text. We'll click the link icon, and then we'll put the link in here. Now, in addition to creating links, we can also create email addresses. And we can do that by highlighting the text going to the link icon, and then changing the link type to email. And what we're going to do is we're going to write our email address that we wanted to send to in this box, and then we're going to put a starter subject and a message body in there. Okay, so once all your text is in, you're going to click OK. And this is actually going to be clickable into an email address and what it will do is it will actually open up the email editor of the person who's actually clicking the link. Now for the sake of deliverability you'll want to keep your linking to affiliate sites to a minimum and redirecting to a minimum. When possible you want to send people to your own website. So what we're going to do now that we have our content in we're going to click save and then we're going to click save and exit. So now that this message is in our drafts area, we are now going to go ahead and send this as a broadcast. We're going to schedule it and we're going to send it immediately. Aweber is going to warn us and ask us if we want to send this broadcast and we're going to go ahead and send it. And now our email with our links is actually sent. So now that this email has arrived in our box, we can actually click these links and they are clickable. Now, what you'll notice is that these links have a tracking code in them. And this allows Aweber to tell us whether or not people are clicking these links. So if we click this link, we'll then know that this link has been clicked when we go and look at our email statistics. We can also have this link, which is our email link, open up into an email facility. And you'll see that our email is now ready to be sent by clicking that link. And Aweber will always give us the statistics for our sending. So actually, we only had one email being received. It was opened by one person, but if we had more than one person inside of our email list, we could actually view our statistics for that email. And Aweber will tell us how many people opened it, how many people clicked on the links. If we had sales tracking and someone reached the page, it'll tell us how many people actually sold, how many people unsubscribed, and then how many times people hit the domain. We can actually look at how many emails are unopened, and then how many have been opened. And if we wanted to send a follow-up email to either people who had not opened our email or people who had opened our email, all we would have to do is to create a segment based on the subscribers. So in this case, all we would need to do is to click send directly to subscribers. Aweber would ask us for a segment name. 
we would create our segment name and then we'd save our segment. Now, obviously, you're going to have more than one person in your email list. In this particular case, the mechanics will work the exact same. You would still create a segment based on either people who had opened, people who had unopened. You can create a segment and actually send an email to them. So here's how that process would work. You'd actually click schedule a broadcast and then you'd actually have all of the list selected. But what you do is you would actually edit and then you would actually send to a certain segment and you'll see there that our segment that we just created is actually there. And so the only people that would receive this email would be those within the segment that we created. And then we would click send message now. So again, we are tracking clicks, we are tracking statistics, and we can tell what our broadcast and our email marketing is actually doing. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, one of the ways to create content for your emails inside of your draft will be to do a blog broadcast. And Aweber has that blog broadcast in the messages area and all you'll have to do is to go to that link and then click create a blog broadcast. Now if you are a blogger or a podcast you'll be able to create your broadcast by having your RSS feed URL. Now this is going to happen every time you publish a certain amount of content. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to write in a subject so that your customers will recognize that this is going to be your content and that you have actually published something new. So you can actually write in here something like new post. You can actually personalize that subject line so that when the person actually sees the email, they're going to see their name, they're going to see that it is a new post. So what you can then do is you can write in a message that's going to appear every time that you have new content. We can actually put that same message inside of the plain text box so that it also goes out. Now if your content is from a WordPress blog, Aweber can actually tell you how to find the feed URL for your RSS. And typically it is going to be in one of the forms that you see here. We can take that feed information and we can place that in our feed. And then we can actually choose a template. Now you'll notice that we've just got writing here, but we can actually use a template or you can leave it in the plain format. And that is what we are going to do. Now, if you scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll notice that we can actually control the send time of the content and the email. So we can actually send the broadcast either immediately or we can send it at a specific time. We can also determine how often we send the broadcast, which will not be dependent on how often we publish. So for example, we can send a broadcast on a certain period of the day, a certain time of the month. We can send it automatically. And of course, we can continue to track clicks. But once we've determined how we're going to send our broadcast, we can then click the items and then we can click save blog broadcast. So now we have an automated, so now we have automated content so that whenever we actually have new content on our blog, it's actually going to be sent to people according to our post reaching the number four. This is a great way of actually keeping the people who actually want your content well aware of what it is that you are doing. Okay, so with that, thanks, and I will see you in another video. Now, before we get ready to actually send this message, one of the things that we're going to want to do is we're going to want to make sure that in addition to our HTML message, that we also send out a plain text version. Some people will only be able to receive plain text even though most people will be able to receive an HTML message inside of one of the common email providers like Gmail or Hotmail or one like that. 
So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the plain text area. And what you're going to notice is that Aweber will auto generate the information based on what's there. However, we don't want our client to see the information like this when it comes to them. So what we want to do is we want to customize this information. We can do that by clicking the custom button. And then we can then customize the look and make corrections as we're doing right here. And once the email is the way that we want it to look, we can click save and exit. And then we can save the entire message. Now there is one other aspect that you'll notice down here that you can actually include an attachment from your hard drive. However, you can reduce the deliverability of your email based on the document that you place here. So you want to make sure that it is absolutely necessary that you send out a document to all of your email subscribers in this list. So now that we have everything in the email the way we want it to be, we're going to click preview and test. And then we can then take a look at our email. If we think it is sufficient, then we can click save and exit. Now the email still appears in our draft and we have a couple of options. We can either copy this to another list or we can actually add this to our follow-up series or our autoresponders. Or we can send it out as a broadcast email. Now each one of these cases requires some explanation, so we are going to actually do that in the next video. However, what we're going to do right now is we're going to take a look at our spam score. And we're going to click this link. What the Aweber filter does is it tries to discern what may look like spam in terms of your message. And if you see some changes that you think you could make, you might want to go back and change some of the phrases that Aweber gives you that could cause a problem in the spam filter. But in general, if your spam score is where it needs to be, you can conclude that this email is going to be okay to send. Now one thing that we can do is we can send this email to ourselves by sending a test email and we'll write our email address here in the box to make sure that it makes it into our box and it doesn't go to the spam filter. All we have to do is click send test. And when we see the email inside of our box, we've got a pretty good indication that this could be a good email and it will actually make it to our customer. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. We are now going to work with the settings on our Aweber list that we just created. And so in order to do that, we're going to go to the list options, drop down menu, and then we're going to click list settings. And you'll recognize some of these settings from a previous tutorial. Now you'll notice here that we have the list name and then we have a unique list ID from Aweber. Now, any time that we have to interact with an API or some kind of system that requires our Aweber information, we will use this Aweber unique ID. So one of the things you can do, so one of the things you can do is you can actually put this in a place where you're going to remember it, or you can always come back to your Aweber list options in order to get this unique list ID. Now the other thing you're going to notice is that all of your information, including your contact address, is going to be here in your list options. Now the reason that that's important is because it is going to appear inside of all of your autoresponder emails. Let's take a look. We are now inside of Gmail and what you're going to notice is that at the bottom of this Aweber email you'll see the unsubscribe link you'll see the change subscriber options, but you'll also see an address. And this address is going to match the address that you have inside of your Aweber settings. So this is where that information is going to appear inside of every email that your client actually gets. You're going to notice that there is an area that says notifications. And this is a way for you to get a notification every time somebody is actually subscribed to this particular list. So if you want to write in a contact email address, 
that will tell you you have a new lead, you can actually do that. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go ahead and write in an email address so that we'll get notification every time someone signs up. Okay, so now we've added that notification here inside of Aweber. So let's see what that's actually going to look like when an email actually comes. To test this, we're actually going to go to the add a subscriber area and we're going to actually put in an email that we are going to be able to see right away. And typically you can see emails right away inside of Gmail. This is actually a good way of being able to test something in your list. You typically want to subscribe to all of your lists so that you will be able to see what your client is actually getting. So we're going to write an email address in here so that we can tell what our clients are going to see. Okay, so now we have an email address in, we're going to click add subscriber. Now that subscriber has been added to our Aweber list, we can now go to our email address. Okay, so now we're going to confirm our subscription just as our client would. You'll see what the email is actually going to look like. And then we're going to click this link. Okay, our subscription has now been confirmed. We are now part of our Aweber list. So now let's check Aweber to make sure that we have a new subscriber. And we can do that by going to manage subscribers. And we now see that there is a subscriber in our Aweber system. So now what we can do is we can check our notifications to make sure that if there is a new subscriber to this list that we would have actually received a notification. And we can actually see that we have notification from Aweber. So all we need to do now is we need to check this email. And we'll notice now that we have a new email that was added to our list. Aweber also tells us the source and this is how you can actually monitor your leads as they are actually coming in. Okay, so with that, thanks and I will see you in another video. Welcome back. Now in the list settings area, you'll notice that there is a section for global text snippets. And global text snippets are going to be pieces of code that you're going to be putting inside of your emails that you use on a regular basis. So for example, let's say that there is a domain name that you use repeatedly throughout your writing of emails. Well, what you do is you'd write a snippet for it. And the way that you do that is you'd designate the snippet and let's go ahead and write in one now. And so once you add in that snippet, all you need to do is you need to click the add button. Now this snippet will now be available to you inside of your emails so that you will be able to use it. Let's take a look. As we are drafting our email, we would come inside of our text area. We'd then go to the personalize area. And you do that by looking all the way to the right hand side and you'd click the drop down arrow. You'd scroll down and you look for your snippet and we'll see the snippet that we created and then what will happen is when our email is actually sent our domain name will appear there because we've actually placed the snippet code here inside of our email what this does is it helps us to save time and effort and to focus on the message of our email okay so with that thanks and i will see you in another video Welcome back. In our list options, in our list settings, you'll notice that there is one other section and it's called the confirmation message section. And you'll recognize that we have already customized our confirmation message when we started putting together the actual list. But if you scroll down, there is actually more that we need to do. And you'll notice here that there is a section for confirmation message settings. Now Aweber, recommends that you use double opt-in because it is the best to make sure that you are going to be able to assure deliverability of your emails. Now you could choose to turn off your double opt-in confirmation so that the client could actually sign up for your list without having to confirm and all you need to do is to turn off 
a weber is going to give you a warning and then you're going to click yes you could easily toggle that back on by clicking the on button now you can also turn on the confirmation message for the times when you actually import subscribers and this is going to be the default setting when you get subscriber imports you can turn that on or you can toggle it back off now when you go through the import process aweber will still give you the opportunity to send a confirmation message when you're going through now there's one more item on this page and you'll notice that there is the confirmation success page now what some marketers will do is they will actually show their client when that confirmation email link is clicked something that they would actually want them to see in order to make a purchase or make a decision you can actually determine that by putting a URL in this space now there is a default success page so that when your client actually confirms their acceptance of being on your list they will be sent to a specific page you can actually take a look at that page by clicking this link now as you can see all this page says is thank you for subscribing so if you wanted to place a commercial message of some kind or you wanted to make another sale you can actually customize your thank you page and you can do that here in this space now one of the advantages of being able to host your own success page is to personalize the page and what you would do is you would click this button and then you get the JavaScript code that Aweber gives you in order to place on your page Aweber will give you the code to place before your header tag and that code would be here you'd need to copy all of the code and if you scroll down the page Aweber will give you more code and wherever you want to display the person's name you would place this HTML code that you're looking at here wherever you'd want to place their email address or customize with it you use this code now again you are going to have to know HTML coding in order to use these scripts but if you know them this is a great way of being able to personalize the actual thank you page okay so with that thanks and I will see you in another video